Hey guys, it's Krista Watson from Krista Quilts here, and today I'm excited to demonstrate my favorite way to baste my quilts. I'm going to demonstrate using my Modern Logs quilt pattern. So the first thing that I recommend is doing it outside or any place where you're going to have good ventilation. I've got a plastic table set up in my backyard and I'm using 505 basting spray. Now you'll notice it's a little bit of a windy day when I did this, but that doesn't really matter. Even if the fabric sticks to itself, it's not going to be permanent, so there's no problem at all. The important thing is you want to make sure that you get the spray everywhere on the back of the quilt. I've got the wrong side up and I'm taking time just getting all the different areas. You don't need a large surface. One table will do and you can just move the quilt around to get all of the areas. Once the backing is done, I'm going to do the same method to spray the quilt top. Again, it's the wrong side up and it's spread over an inexpensive plastic table. Again, don't let wind be a problem. If you're worried about the basting spray getting in your face or your eyes or your nose, you can go ahead and wear a mask. But with this well ventilated outdoor area, I don't really have a problem at all. The important thing is to get all the areas of the quilt top and move it back and forth to make sure you evenly spray it out. If you have more room and you wanna set up a couple of tables, you can do that too. Or if you don't have a very big table at all, you can see that you don't really need that much room to work. Being outside will allow the spray to dissipate and not cause any problems inside the home. Once I've finished spraying the top and the backing, I fold them up and I bring them inside to baste on my design wall. See the links that I'm going to leave for you in the comments below if you'd like to learn how I make this design wall. It's made from foam core boards wrapped in flannel and it measures about 8 feet by 8 feet. Plenty of room for nice large quilts. Now if you don't have that much space, don't worry. You can use a smaller area or you can do the same method using the table or the floor. But if you can do it on the wall, that's my favorite method because you can get really close and it doesn't hurt your back. You'll see that I'm taking a few pins and I'm pinning the top of the backing to the top of my design wall. That way gravity can do its work and it can help me unfold and unfurl this kind of messy backing. Now, some wrinkles might occur, but that's not a big deal. I'm just going to take my hands and a long ruler to smooth everything out. Again, don't worry if pieces stick to itself and it feels a little bit sticky, so you can just wash your hands when you're all done. I spend a lot of time smoothing everything out. I'm getting a little bit of stickiness on my hands. It's not that big of a deal. I'm smoothing everything out. Now I'm going to grab my long ruler and I use one acrylic ruler just for basting. You can wash it off with warm soapy water or just do what I do and have one ruler that's set aside just for basting. Notice how I take the time and I use the ruler to smooth everything out. Again, you're going to see some wrinkles. I don't worry about getting out every single wrinkle because I know at the very end I'm going to iron the whole quilt and that will let, allow me to get out the rest of the wrinkles. Mostly what I'm doing now is just smoothing things out on the design wall, making sure that I can see the entire backing. Now if the backing is bigger than your design wall, then you can let some of it hang off. But for this large design wall, I can pretty much do up to a queen to king size quilt. I will continue smoothing out all the layers, but again, I'm not gonna be too picky about it. You'll also notice that it's not all even around the edges. That's okay because that's all gonna get cut off. The important thing is you want the backing to be about four to six inches all around bigger than the quilt top. That way, when you add the batting and the top, you don't have to line things up perfectly in the center. I like to give myself a lot of wiggle room because I know I'm gonna make mistakes. Now it's time to add the batting. My favorite batting is a cotton and wool blend from Hobbs Batting. It gives a nice drapey feel from the cotton and the wool allows the stitches to really show. The other thing about it that I like is it's nice and soft and it's not very heavy. 
Also, by having wool in your batting, that doesn't have a memory, which means if you fold up the quilt and then hang it up, you're not going to see a lot of the crease lines. So that's why I really love this batting. My batting is bigger than the quilt top, and on one side, it's a little bit bigger than the backing as well. I don't worry too much about the batting being the exact right size. As long as it's bigger than everything, I'm going to use the same process that I did for the backing. I'm going to smooth it out with my hands. I'm going to grab my long acrylic ruler and that adds like an arm extension on so that I have more room to smooth it out. And again, I'm just going all the way around the quilt. Again, I love being so close to the wall when I'm using my design wall and I don't have to stretch and it doesn't hurt my back. So again, I'm taking a few moments, smoothing everything out. You can see the quilt backing through the batting and I'm just smoothing it out, using a ladder when I need to, moving it all the way. Again, any of those edges that are rough around the edges are gonna get trimmed off. The last thing I have to do is just get this one little section and then the batting is all ready. Now it's time to add the quilt top in the same manner that I added the other two layers. It starts out as a little bit of a wrinkled mess, but that's okay because notice how easily I was able to unfurl it and I'm starting to pin it onto my design wall. The pins aren't absolutely necessary, but they help hold the weight of the quilt while I scooch it around since I have to use my ladder to move around the area. What I'm doing is I like to kind of match things up in the upper left hand corner, but I still have extra batting and extra backing sticking out. This puts all the bulk of the excess underneath and to my right, but I could put it more in the center if I needed to. Again, I'm going to take a few minutes to spread everything out, smooth it all out, and if I need to, I can always reposition. I can lift up the quilt, I can move it around because the, the Basting spray is tacky, but it's not permanent, and so it's very easy to reposition it if I need to. The important thing here is I want to smooth everything out, and I want the blocks to stay nice and flat and straight. I can use the edges of the rulers and the seam lines of the blocks to keep everything relatively square. Now, if you've done a good job with your piecing and your pressing and your quilt top lies flat to begin with, you're not going to have any problems when you're basting. Again, I've got to smooth out those wrinkles and those lumps and bumps, so I'll go up and down the ladder as much as I need to to smooth everything out. I get a little exercise going up and down the ladder and walking all the way around, so it's a pretty good thing. I probably spend the most amount of time smoothing out the quilt top because that's where you're going to see it the most. Now this is why it's really important to do a good job with piecing the quilt top and when you follow my Modern Logs quilt pattern I also give you an extra tip. When you're finished sewing the quilt top you want to do a stay stitch all the way around the edges before you baste so that it secures those edge seams from splitting open. You can see that I put quite a bit of strain as I'm smoothing things around, moving things, yanking things into place. So if I know those edge seams are secure, the quilt top is not going to go anywhere, none of the seams are going to pop open, and it's going to look great when I'm ready to machine quilt. I'm just going to do a little more smoothing, a little bit more moving. My knees are getting a good workout, but it's very therapeutic and relaxing to make sure that all three layers are nice and smooth and ready for quilting. The next thing I'm going to do is take a pair of batting shears and I'm going to trim off those excess edges. Notice how close I get to the quilt top. You can get pretty close once you're comfortable with this system. If you're not sure, you can leave a couple extra inches. I like to get close maybe only about an inch or two away from the quilt top, and the reason why is so that the backing and the batting don't flip underneath me while I'm quilting. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has accidentally stitched the underside of the quilt to itself. So when I trim it pretty close to the edges, it eliminates that problem. Again, I'm still leaving about an inch or two so I have enough room just in case things shift. 
Once the three layers are basted together, here comes the magic part. I'm going to iron the back and the front of the entire quilt. I'm using what's called a big board. It's just made out of a big piece of plywood with a little bit of batting and a covering. I was able to find it really inexpensively online. It's really nice because it covers the entire surface of my ironing board and it gives me a lot more room to work. As I'm pressing the back side, you can see that I'm continuing to smooth things in place. I'm using a hot, dry iron with no steam. It's set to the cotton setting. Now what ironing the quilt at this point does is two important things. Number one, it sets the glue so it's not going to come apart. And the second thing it does is it allows me one more chance to smooth out all the wrinkles. Actually, there's kind of a bonus third thing that it does too. It kind of smushes and mushes everything together so the fibers get a little bit intertwined so your quilt is not going to shift. I'm getting all areas of the quilt backing first and I'm moving it around back and forth to get the entire area. It can take a little bit of extra time when you're doing this, but the results are well worth it. If you've pressed most of your seams open like I have, it's going to be a lot easier to iron the quilt because everything is going to be flat and there's not going to be as many lumps and bumps. Once you're done ironing the back side, you need to do the same thing to the front. And the reason I do it in that order is because since you're going to see the front the most, that's where you can really tell if you ironed out all the wrinkles. Again, I'm working very methodically, moving sections of the quilt, coming back and forth, up and down to make sure I cover all of those blocks. The nice thing about ironing a quilt made from blocks like this is that you can remember which areas that you've pressed one block at a time, one row at a time. I've speeded up this whole video, of course, and I wish I could work this fast in real time, but this allows you to see the entire process from start to finish of my spray basting process. I like to put on some nice music or sometimes listen to an audiobook or maybe just enjoy my thoughts as I sit here and press all three layers together. It feels nice and warm and I'm ready to quilt the quilt once this step is done. I can either quilt it right away or fold it up and set it aside for when I'm ready to begin machine quilting. I sure hope you've enjoyed the spray basting tutorial. Be sure to check out the links below for all the products needed to make this quilt. Happy quilting!